I largely make cups, lots of cups, largely in porcelain, and that is sort of my bread and butter. It provides me enough of income to afford an apartment and afford the studio and buy materials and every once in a while get imported here. Kind of a beautiful part about being a production artist is sort of the go all the time and then have these breaks. And right now is one of those times where I'm preparing for some fine art shows and doing more one-of-a-kind objects and create work where I'm just responding to anything and everything. Uh, most things around me, a lot of the architecture and providence, greater social issues, sort of the idea of reinventing these lost spaces. Just working creatively, which is a really nice transition from being a production artist. I was a member of PIPS, one of the folks that founded the Providence Initiative for Psychogeographic Studies. What is Psychogeographic Studies exactly? It's sort of outside what they would show you in a tourism catalog or brochure. It's those little tiny spaces and, and kind of embracing those lost spaces is what psychogeography is about. And what PIPS did is respond to that and every year we threw an annual conference celebrating those lost spaces. And we had lots of events in an outdoor festival type atmosphere. I think that's where my narrative still is derived, uh, sort of the exploration of lost spaces. Uh, I think a lot of my work is sort of selected from archives of research that I did postgraduate school and then independently through PIPs. I would say that still drives my creative processes, so sort of those investigations, conceptually speaking, sort of looking at the greater picture. Everything is made right here with these hands, from a rock lump of mud, to all the prints that I make myself. I do my own screen printing, exposures, Photoshop, and I even mix my own pigments for prints. So everything is quite literally done here. So for the four color process, uh, I have my four colors here. It's all the same image, just separated into different color fields for the printing process. I usually start with the lightest color, so yellow layer is my first layer. Each blank tile or throne form is, I consider, a blank canvas. And when you're working in porcelain, it's a beautiful blank canvas. The texture and the, like how supple the clay is when it's at this leather heart stage. It just is a very, very beautiful material to work with. So I sort of respond to that shape with images and then I, my next step is sort of thinking about graphically, um, conceptually, or if I'm working with a narrative in a series of work, you know, how do I fit those images together with the form? And that's our yellow layer. I try to do as much printing as possible on the wet clay. Printing on the wet clay allows you the flexibility to sort of glaze in and go in with another series of color or another series of prints, or if you want to cover something up, you can use a dark glaze, or if you want to accentuate something, you can use a bright glaze. The glazing is sort of like the finishing touch. All right. I'm originally from Wisconsin. Northern Wisconsin, a little town called Wausau. Yeah, that's where I grew up 19 years of my life. And then I went to undergraduate school in Wisconsin. Realized that I needed to uh, leave the Midwest if I was going to be interested in art. <laughs> so I came out east after that. Completed my MFA in 2003 at Rhode Island School of Design. And I've been here ever since. A lot of the lost spaces that I've explored have been really inspirational for me and it's one of the reasons that I've actually enjoyed staying in Providence after graduating from RISD. And then the love for the revitalization has brought me to spaces like this studio here and um, hoping that these spaces can be available for artists in the future or at least creative ways of re-understanding these spaces and how they work in our society. There is a streak of performance art in me. Um, I don't know where it came from. It might have been the slow release valve on making meticulous craft objects, but uh, it just kind of happened. Uncle Thirsty was born. But I would say, generally speaking, uh, Uncle Thirsty is a very positive character. You know, uh, people celebrate his appearance at a social gathering. He's uh, probably like a C or D grade celebrity in Providence, which is always an aspiring uh, position to be in.
I assumed Providence would be a one-stop hop on my tour. And just by chance, I got interested and started the clay department over at the steel yard. The steel yard started the year that I graduated, which was kind of incredible to sort of shoulder our way into what was a very dominant metalworking facility and start a small community ceramics program. It's also been a large community support network for me as a ceramic artist. It's gotten me in touch with other people that do ceramics. Uh, we add new instructors and new classes every term and started teaching day classes for adults too. And I'm really excited about that opportunity for other artists. All right. You can start to see it a little bit more now. Not bad. So this is the make it or break it layer, really. And it's very obvious because it's the most dramatic layer. I actually like it when the registration's off just a little bit. Seems more human. I don't know, less computery. Even though these images are all processed in a computer, there's still very much a handmade element to printing them, especially on porcelain. All right. That looks good. That's fantastic, actually. And good registration. Not too much warping on the tile. It's hard to say whether people look at the narrative over aesthetic. I think a lot of times pretty colors and pretty prints are a lot of things that sell work. And those conversations do bubble to the surface, but I would say it's more rare that they do. Providence is amazing. I think it's a culture of makers, and I think that's really unique from other places that I've been. It's a big culture of doers, and everyone seems to be like wiggling as hard as they can. And I think that's very, very inspiring for me as an artist. It like, forces me to wiggle a little harder as well. Things I make can last a very, very, very long time, if you're, as long as you don't drop them, I guess. But it's fun to make things that people can use, too. Everything is based on an inherent utility. I think they're all one-of-a-kind art objects, but they also sort of have that, like, you know, this is a cup that I can use, or this is a bowl that I can eat from. And I think there's something really warm about that in making art objects that are actually physically held and touched by people. It's really a satisfying field to be in and I'm really happy just sort of responding to these sort of technical things that I've been learning. I can see the evolution, I can see the progress, and as long as an artist can see that progress, I think that's inspiring enough to sort of push ahead and work those, you know, 60, 80 hour weeks that can come up and, you know, still be happy with it at the end of the week. 